So I'm doing this video on personality changes. And what I mean by personality change um, isn't like, a, I'm not going to talk about the impulsive behavior that is a result of the medication. That's like a big area that I don't know a lot about. I haven't experienced it. It is something that I want to talk about even though I don't think it affects young or early onset Parkinson's people as much as late onset or average onset. Um, it is kind of like a something that's not really talked about in Parkinson's and that's where the medication causes like impulsive behavior, like real serious impulsive behavior usually like um, excessive shopping, sexual addictions, um, things like that. But what I do want to talk about today is just regular personality change, changes that I myself have experienced. And um, I did this video because I was kind of going back and forth with some comments on another YouTuber who has Parkinson's and she has a channel called The Seedlings Effect. And we were just going back and forth on the um, comments about personality changes and we kind of agreed that we had seen some personality changes. So I just want to discuss that. Just a reminder, I was diagnosed two years ago and um, I was diagnosed with early young onset Parkinson's. So these are changes that I have found but as everyone kind of finds out, everyone with Parkinson's is really different. So this might not affect you. I think most likely that if you are a teenager or in your 20s that your personality is still kind of developing so you're not going to see so much of a change. Um, the Parkinson's may affect your personality but you're not going to notice it. So what I notice um, with the personality, ch personality changes and I think why it affects me and others that are a little bit or a lot older than 20 is that we've kind of had the same personality for a while so we do notice any changes. I'm kind of surprised at how quickly there are changes and like how hard it is to deal with your personality changing when you kind of are not in control of the change. So just to go through some of the things that I have noticed myself and, and some of the things are not bad but again, it's just the fact that things are changes, changing like right in front of my eyes and sometimes, or a lot of times, I can't do anything about it. So one big change before and after my diagnosis that I've noticed is that my face is frozen. I don't know if you're going to notice that on video, but I do these videos because it helps me in a lot of different areas of my Parkinson's. And what area it does help me with is noticing if my face is frozen. Most of the time it is frozen, but I don't think too many people would notice that. But what I mean by that is that I kind of have the same expression and I sort of really have to like force myself or my face to move or uh, even to smile. It takes a great deal of effort. And the reason why that is is that it's like the, the facial muscles, um, they have to move and so with Parkinson's slowness really affects me so it takes great effort to like smile or do different expressions like I'm really trying really hard to make some different expressions it's not automatic so the Parkinson's greatly affects your movement it's a movement disorder so it's not that I can't make the expression it's that I now have to think about it in my mind like every time I like smile or do any kind of facial change, it's not automatic for me. I have to really think about it. It's really an effort. Now that's not with everyone, but some people with Parkinson's do experience that. Um, also along with that, I have noticed personally voice changes and um, those kind of come and go. Like right now, I am noticing a lot of change in my voice. And again, that's one reason that I do these videos. It's actually like therapy for me. I've actually been through a lot of speech therapy. Um, that was good. And I know a lot of people with Parkinson's have speech problems that have like never gone through a speech therapist. 
and I think it's because their doctors are, are not bringing it up. Um, so that's one thing, not to get off the subject, but like that you have to be kind of aggressive with your own um, Parkinson's, with your own disease, like self-advocacy. So anyway, I'm changing what I was talking about. The voice changes. Yeah, it's not only that my voice has changed in some ways, it's also more softer. And I did have a soft voice anyway, but it's even more softer. Now, the voice changes are not consistent. Like right now, I'm going through a phase when my voice has changed, but then it'll like be okay. So I'm not really sure why it goes back and forth, except that is kind of typical of Parkinson's, where the Parkinson's symptoms do that. You can see someone one day and they're having trouble walking. The next day they'll be running and they're, and they're fine. So I guess that's just due to the Parkinson's. But I am aware of it and it does kind of, you know, affect my personality. Another thing I kind of mentioned, like my voice was quiet. I'm generally more quiet in general now than I was before. Now, if you know me, I was always a quiet person anyway, but now I'm even more quiet. And it's not so much that I want to be quiet. It's more that it actually takes an effort to talk because talking, you're actually moving if you think about it. You're actually using the muscles and if you have slowness, it takes some effort to talk. So there's other reasons too that I think I'm more quiet. But one is that it takes physical effort for me to talk. Two is that I have a hard time talking and moving. So um, if I'm dancing or if I'm doing any kind of movement, because my movement's not automatic, I sort of have to initiate that movement and continue to move. So it's very distracting to me and it's it very much like um, takes a lot of energy to talk also. So it's kind of confusing. So if I'm walking, concentrating on that, and talking, and having like a really deep conversation, I really cannot do the both. And then another reason I think that I'm more quiet is that I'm actually in pain a lot. So I notice that, you know, because I deal with chronic pain, again, not everyone with Parkinson's deals with that, I'm really quiet because I'm just kind of trying to get over the fact that I'm in pain. Another reason um, that I might be more quiet is that my medication is not working right now. So I do notice that I'm quiet and withdrawn when my medicine comes to, like it comes to the end of the, the time it's working and a new medication is due, that I get more quiet. Okay, quickly some other things because I don't want to make this too long. I know that I definitely have more anxiety than I had before because I never had a problem with anxiety and now I do. I, I always was kind of like a worrier but this is like being anxious over silly things like being anxious because I have to walk across a coffee, sh coffee shop and I'm scared that I'm either going to trip into something or not be able to hold something up so it's kind of like weird anxiety and so they do say that that's from a lot of times it's like a result of the parkinson's and or the medication okay i'm definitely more depressed and it's not so much i mean sometimes it is to be honest that i'm depressed about the the parkinson's i know a lot of times when i uh, read things or see things about parkinson's they kind of emphasize that people aren't necessarily depressed because they have Parkinson's. It's kind of like a, a side effect of their medication, but more due to the Parkinson's because the Parkinson's um, is caused by a lack of dopamine in the brain. So that also affects depression. But yeah, I'm definitely more depressed.